I'm Dorothy Dugan of the Golden Adventurers. We're a group of pensioners who believe anything's possible for old people. And to prove it, we'll be taking over the daytime live studio at five past twelve. But I don't know why they've got this man sitting next to me. Well, he used to be a presenter, but now I'm not so sure. Join us after the news. Who's your agent? Judy Spires in Birmingham for today's Daytime Live. who say life begins at 60. Comedy star Helen Lederer reviews lifestyle magazines. One woman's experience of a mental institution. And our guest of the day is actor Saeed Jaffrey. And welcome to Daytime Live. On a packed programme today, we've been meeting the Golden Adventurers, a group of pensioners who say it's never too late for anything. Well, I like that. I'm two minutes late into the studio and they've got a stand-in for me already. Well, this is Ruth, who's just one of the Golden Adventurers. Actually, what are you doing in February? I'd like a couple of weeks off, Ruth. Oh. Do you fancy that, dear? Come in for a couple of weeks? Yes. <laughs> well, Ruth and the rest of the gang will be meeting a little bit later. They'll be getting up to all sorts of weird and wonderful things, not just here, but at a very strange place, as I think you'll find out a little bit later. Also joining us today is... Well, opening the programme today, we met Ruth from the Golden Adventurers. Now meet the whole gang, and they are Dorothy, Joan, Dorita, Ruth, and the man who's in charge of this riotous lot of ladies, John Bridgewood. I say riotous because as old age pensioners, they reckon they'll go anywhere and have a crack at anything, don't they, John? Now, how come they're here today doing a spot of television? Is that it's your mastermind, is it? I'm afraid so. How do you uh, come up with your ideas then? Well, I don't really know. I just write them down in the book and um, sometimes without hope of them coming true. And uh, this, this particular entry says TV presenting and I wondered how I would get, mm. get the thing done. And you've come to our rescue and here we are. Come so to our rescue? Well, we've yet to see that. <laughs> Let's find out a little bit more about what the ladies get up to. Joan, introduce the, the film we're going to see now and tell us what it's about. <coughs> Well, and now for the Golden Adventures, Golden Adventure to a quarry near Bolton in Lancashire. We went along on a freezing cold day and we had a great time trudging about in the mud. Your reporter is one of our group. She's 76 years young. of the Golden Adventurers. I'm a bit nervous about doing this, but I have had practice with the Golden Adventurers. I announced the trains over the Tannoy at Victoria Station. Today, with the close supervision of ARC quarry officials, we've come along to try our hand at the machinery. It all looks pretty impressive. But this is only one of the umpteen things we've had a go at. We're not your average old age pensioners. We do things people would never dream of. Oh, like it, oh, like it <laughs> oh well, I enjoyed being in the jacuzzi, and I'd recommend that for anybody. I drove the tank at Catherick. I was a model. I drove a Formula First racing car. I got a one post set brake at Snooker. All these things that we do are organised by Mr. John Bridgewood. Good morning, John. Morning, How sir. do you get in involved in these things? Well, basically, Ruth, I went down to the job centre one day and saw a job advertised. Uh, they wanted someone to work with the retired people. And I had worked with the retired people on board cruise ships before. And I decided to go for the job, and here we are. What was our group like before you came? Well, you were one of the earlier members from four years ago. Last December it was, when I started, 
Uh, I believe he just played bingo and gathered around the piano and went to the old garden centre. Well, I thought that gathering around the piano and bingo was all very nice, but I think the first thing that occurred to me in my mind was what happens when people go into the, the uh, post office. The first time they ever receive a pension is that shuddering thud of a stamp by a post office clerk, which indicates to someone that they are now of old age, and this is rubbish. People at 60 and 65 are no longer old. They can go on for a long, long time after that. So therefore I decided to introduce in new things that would add zest to life and give them more interest in life. What have you got planned for the future? Well, the next one coming up, we're going down to the Royal Northern College of Music. We'll watch rehearsal for an hour, and then individual members will be allowed to conduct the full orchestra. And that will be a full, complete 60-piece orchestra. Thanks very much, John, for the interview. My name's Joan Shedrick, I'm a new pensioner. Uh, I like this the best. This has been great coming here. I like the snooker, I like the dancing, I like the motor racing, but this has been great, just great. I like dropping the ball. <laughs> I really enjoyed it, it was fascinating. My name's Dorothy Dugan, I'm 63 years old and my favourite activity was motor racing, driving a Formula First racing car. Now, when I got in the car, they strapped me in and uh, told me that to watch the speedometer and if I got up to 40, 30, I would be doing all right. When I got on the track and I got up to 30, I just thought, well, I do this in my own car, so I put my foot down. And when I came off, they said to me, um, how fast did you go? And I said, 40 mile an hour. And they said, well, that isn't actually miles per hour. It's revs, and 40,000 revs is a lot more than 40 mile an hour. This is Ian Cross, manager of the quarry. How did we do, Ian? Well, Ruth, you did very well, considering. How would we go on if we wanted to have a job in the, in the quarry? Well, I think if they'd have applied for the job about 50 years ago, we would have given them a chance. Cheeky, young fucker. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going for the big one. What happens now, Ian? Well, Ruth, We've placed our quarry personnel have placed explosives in the rock and we're going to blast part of the rock before we send it through the processing plant. So this piece of electronic equipment we have here is linked up to the detonators which will fire the blast. So if you all fall very gently up after three, we'll set the blast off. One, two, three, pull! I think Ruth that uh, Panorama will be after you. Gotta turn turn down the language, I think. A bit. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Well this is marvellous for me because I don't have to do a lot today because uh, we've got a bit of music now, but I don't even have to tell you what it's about. Dorita, you're going to introduce the music for us. Yes, I am. A warm front of comedy music is hanging over Pebble Mill at the moment. 
It is a high pressure tribute to our TV weathermen. Please welcome a tribe of toffs who are at 26 in the charts with John Ketley, a weatherman. for today, but uh, ladies, how have you all enjoyed it here? Oh, lovely. lovely. Great. Lovely. Enjoyed every yes. minute of it. And you, you've got some ballooning sort of sorted out for them, haven't yes, you, Yes, we've got two balloons ready to oh, go. It would be lovely if we right can weather. get that film. And I must just say, if I get asked to do any dangerous stunts, I'm going to give you a ring. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, actress Helena Bonham Carter, music from veteran jazz violinist Stefan Grappelli. We're out in the greenhouse with our young gardener, Peter Sandbach, and we'll also be decoding your dreams. So make sure you get an early night tonight. Meanwhile, from us and our presenting team, who we've loved having here today, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>